Alrighty, welcome back to the Forerunner 3 4 swap. Tonight I'm going to be starting some of the wiring work. It's going to be more or less looking at things and understanding what I've got. So I'm going to just kind of do a little fill ins as I figure things out here and how I'm going to do it. I think if I get this to a point where I understand it enough, I think I could actually make a pretty good detailed video of how, of how I did this to help anybody else doing this uh, later down the road. So I'm gonna see what happens. So I got my wiring diagrams here. So I'll be going through these and figuring things out. I got multiple pages. Oh, I keep flipping to the wrong pages. There we go. A few different pages on each of how every plug is laid out, so. Hopefully these are right and are going to match up. I didn't search any of this by VIN in the in where I got my wiring diagrams from, but either way, I'm going to lay both the harnesses out next to each other and start figuring stuff out. I'm thinking I'm only going to need this pigtail here off the 3 liter harness because this goes into the body controls. And then I cut the pigtail for the body controls out of the T100 so that I can hopefully just make a jumper harness that's plug and play for the Forerunner. So that's my that's my idea. We're gonna see how it works out. Alrighty, so it's been a couple days since I left off last on the wiring video. Kind of took me a couple nights of going through the harness to get to a point where I'm understanding it. So. Now that I'm to that point, I think I can actually explain how I'm going to do this compared to how I keep seeing people do it. So, I have a very high level of OCD when I do things, and I like it to look as clean as possible without adding... I want to add as little to this as possible. I want it to look as OEM as it can, so... This is how I'm going to do it. I've been following the wiring diagrams here. I don't really feel comfortable enough explaining this. Once I get it in the vehicle, how I want it done, I think I can explain this a lot better rather than just trying to explain this because I only have a weird understanding of this in my head. I don't know how much it'll make sense to other people, but so the videos I've seen that are the most helpful, they're just wiring everything to their own fuses and relays to power everything on and make it its own standalone system, which it basically kind of is going to be its own standalone system anyway, just because it's so separate from the chassis harness. So, I mean, even this is, there's nothing that actually connects it to the chassis harness other than the body plugs, which we're going to be merging with our Tacoma harness or T100 harness to make it as plug and play as possible. So, but I want to... I want to integrate it into the factory Toyota fuse box and make it work like it's OEM. So I'm going to be following this through and hooking it all up through the main relays that already exist because they're actually tied in very similar for both vehicles. It's not much different. So I'm going to get started on it and I will give you bits and pieces. I will. Not necessarily give you bits and pieces, but I'll give you the best explanation I can as I'm going through this. So here is what I have come up with. So I've got my two jumper harnesses right here. This is the Forerunner side. This is my T100 side. I am splicing into here. This is just power for the ECU that runs completely on its own in the Forerunner system comes from fuse to that connector straight into our ECU and on our T100 it would also do the same and I will end up tying a um, oh what is this my OBD2 into it most likely too so but for now we're gonna be setting it up like that and then we've got our switch power coming in the same way it'll be running up and behind and then into the same jumper harness from the Forerunner side and then spliced into the T100 side. That way it can supply both switch power to the ECU and the harness. So and that'll be all run from the factory fuse panel in the T or in the Forerunner. So my next step will be going through and hooking up the gauges, but 
that is what I got for now. I hope that helps. I know it's a probably a pretty poor way of explaining it, but you kind of got to understand how to read these to be able to do this. So I suggest putting time into learning this because I, trust me, I'm learning a lot about this myself. This project has helped me figure this out a lot. So that's just, I just wanted to show how I'm doing this rather than running your own views and relay systems, which is very easy to do, but I like it to be as OEM as possible. And I can, if I can just make this all plug and play, that's how I would like to do it. So I'm going to keep moving forward with this and Hey, worst comes to worst. I fry an ECU and I restart. So shit happens and we learn. So I've slowly started to make my whole conversion chart here. This is my T100 side of water temp tack and oil pressure and here's my forerunner side which I also just discovered that I kind of was curious about when I pulled the harness out was my speedometer because I have this whole harness that ran back and plugged into the transmission and all that that seemed a little different than the T100 so I now need to go back through the T100 wiring harness on my phone and Sadly, I don't have the cluster stuff printed out. I didn't really expect to figure that out as easily as I did, but I put a lot of time into thinking about this, and I'm honestly starting to understand this a lot more than I did when I started, which is the whole goal to this in reality. So, <laughs> but yeah, so gonna be these here are the two plugs I'm gonna be merging to make all of these controls work. So. I do have a few questions that I'm going to be running over with my boss in the morning just to verify some stuff like these here on the wire diagram has both my connectors so I'm assuming that I have to wire them both together and then wire them into the body side of things just so that the ECU can see an oil pressure I'd imagine is why that might be but going to run that over him for a few things and it's great that I have him to ask questions for because he really enjoys this project or these projects in general so makes my life a lot easier slowly figuring that out so by the end of tomorrow night we should have this all merged together I hope it's definitely going to look really nice it's going to be neat and tidy and that's what I'm going for so Stay tuned for it. This is only going to get better. Today is Thursday, and if you've watched any of my other videos and heard me mention Thursday, you would know. Got me another engine. <laughs> I would guess you could consider this take three. This is my second engine I've gotten, but this will be my third attempt at an engine to put in here considering the first one, the free one, and now you. So, she's a high mileage one. There's a timing belt done at 250,000. I believe the paperwork I got with it from the salvage yard was 280,000, but you know what? That, my friends, is a $200 3.4, so that is the right 3.4 for me, and we're gonna see what we can do with her. So, first project of tonight is getting her in the garage. The new 3.4, is finally in the shop so gonna have to do a little bit of tidying up with this one clean up some mouse nests reseal the lower intake and everything sadly this one has a completely different style um, header and crossover style on it which I read about on forums but didn't realize this was a newer engine so pulled all the exhaust manifolds off the blown up 3.4 or the seized one so that we can put them on this engine and put the crossover I made on this one. So hopefully I'll have all those gaskets tomorrow. You can work on that a little bit this weekend to get it in. Then we gotta throw the oil pan on, the motor mounts on. I'm debating if I'm moving my dipstick. I cannot figure out why people move it. It sits here on the 3.4 and here on the 3 liter. And apparently there's a plug you knock out and you can move it over and put the 3 liter dipstick in it. But I truly can't figure out why people do that. So I might fuck around and regret it later. But I think I might leave my dipstick. Or maybe that's because of the oil pan now that I'm thinking about it. I might be 
yeah that might actually be because of the oil pan but that will be for a later date so gonna get that figured out but gonna continue on the wiring harness and hopefully get that wrapped up tonight or tomorrow so that that can go in and then just a matter of putting the engine in so figured I would blow the manifolds off of here right away just to make sure that the other ones do fit and the crossover obviously fits with them so I already kind of had an idea they would fit I had my buddy at the parts store run what year range the gaskets were and it was from 95 to 04 so this motor is an 02 they just have a different style flange or it's just rotated a different angle and a single port over here which kind of sucks that one would probably have been easier to make into my crossover than this one but eh, what do i know got her all done we're gonna use these ones i'll have gaskets here tomorrow for it so maybe we'll be on track for this going in we'll see all right tonight has been great progress on my wiring harness it's taken me a lot of time it's definitely late i can't lie about that but this harness is going to be ready to go in the in the forerunner tomorrow and i'm super super proud of this so got everything wired up right here there's still odds and ends that i gotta figure out but basically this thing is to a point where it can start run and drive this is basically dlc connector stuff and ac and amenities you know stuff that doesn't inhibit it from running so the main portion of this we've got our ecu plug here that should be powered and ready to go we then have that switched into our power here which runs in well not necessarily our power we've got it spliced into our switch power and our constant power to our ih1 plug which goes into the factory side of our forerunner so that's going to be all powered by the factory fuse box relay and everything it's going to be all turnkey there's no separate fuse and relays i am super proud of this i'm not counting my eggs before they hatch here but I've taken so much time to put this together so and then we've got this one here this is our IH2 plug which meets up with our IE2 plug on the T100 side and this merges my gauges and that stuff together so those are all figured out I've also I've decided to do this a bit different. I don't know how people do the transmission side of things. I'm not going to explain what the plugs are, although if you can look here, they kind of all match up to the same color because this is my whole 3 liter um, transmission harness. I'm eliminating the T100 transmission harness and just using the 3 liter one. And then I'm also going to be using the factory 3 liter ignition solenoid wire where I've noticed everybody uses the factory 3-4 ignition solenoid wire and then, you know, wires it in to the same plug. But I figured this one already is running past our circuit, so why, why run something extra that doesn't, wasn't meant to be there when this was meant to be there? So... My ignition is still going to stay with the 3 liter side of things. And then we're going to be running the factory speed sensor. I've got my transmission sign or transmission. Oh, no, that'd be the transfer case. Um, shift location. I can't think of terminology, don't mind. It's, I'm getting tired. And then I believe I identified this one to be cruise control, but I haven't really found the proper wiring diagrams that make me comfortable to wiring it up. So that one's gonna be MIA for the moment being, which is not a big deal to me. And then this harness here took me a little while. Some of the wiring diagrams I found, I kept finding this extra plug and I couldn't figure out what it was for. And I finally discovered it was for my front diff. So got that followed through the three later harness which honestly was a great learning experience of just pulling that whole harness apart and tracing out how this was and getting it set up back to how it was because this is just factory three liter harness at this point so 
All my four wheel drive indicator lights and everything should work. Got it all wired up to the IE2 or IH2 plug. That's all to the forerunner end, and this is all set up factory forerunner. So that's how I'm going to do this. Hopefully, tomorrow I'll get this all loomed up. Well, yeah, I might as well loom it right away. I mean, there's no turning back. <laughs> it's either going to work or it's going to fry itself. So there's there's only two options here. We got a 50-50 shot, and I'm feeling good about it. I've put in so much time, so much effort, that I'm just excited to get this loomed up and thrown in here because we got our new engine. Third time's the charm. We're going to get this thing all buttoned up this weekend and either early next week or by the end of this weekend we're going to hear the Forerunner run and I'm so excited for it so heck yeah this might go into tomorrow installing the harness it might not so depending on where we go you will see well after a whole lot of messing around the harness is finally completely complete that's all I gotta say about it. This side's all loomed up, ready to go. Gonna install it back in. Brandon's getting the motor all sealed up for me, so it's his fault when it leaks. That'll be nice. So, hopefully, we'll be putting the motor in here in a little bit. Well, we still gotta put motor mounts and reseal the, put the different oil pan on and completely forgot that I did figure out why I have to switch to the dipstick and the dipstick might be an ordeal, so. We will see.